Welcome to the Ramsey Center. It's time for the big show, the A-League Championship with Sal Solomon. I am Kyle Rush, and Sal, what are you looking for in this one? I'm looking for Showtime to come out and use the athleticism. They got quite an advantage with players like Nick Stamp, DeShay Briscoe, Jeffrey Felton, who we call Jeff in the wreck. Those guys oh. are straight athletes. We got Ben and Jerry, so they're more sophisticated on offense and a little bit more hands down on defense. We're going to see what, what kind of pressure Ben and Jerry puts on the, on the athleticism of Showtime as we've got. Ryan Keyes is also joining us here momentarily. And Ryan, what are some keys for you as we get set for the A-League Championship? Well, the keys for me, Kyle, is to sit down and catch my breath for a second. No, uh, <laughs> just kidding here. This is going to be a fun game because, uh, as we saw in the Greek versus men's B team uh, game, that one is where the talent started to pick up, and I'm expecting even more out of the men's A. Well, Sal warned us of some showtime. He's already expecting some high-flying dunks here in game number two. We'll send it to the PG PA announcer and TJ Eves on the sideline. championship and Ryan Showtime's name Showtime for more than one reason for a creative name they can put on a show led by Miles Lawrence well yes and I'm, I'm comparing sizes right now and don't get me wrong I'm rooting for Ben and Jerry's because I like the name I love the name Ben and Jerry's I love some ice cream but honestly Showtime looks like they could eat Ben and Jerry's <laughs> Both ice cream and the team hey. right now. I'm not liking Ben and Jerry's chances in this game. Ice cream's meant to get eaten, right? <laughs> ice cream is meant to be eaten, but Ben and Jerry's is out with their best player, in my opinion, John Brown, as he sits out with an injured ankle or some kind of lower leg injury. It's going to be nice to see how this team can control the tempo without their best player. A quick layup. You ask how they can control the tempo? Tempo, a quick deuce with a lay-in on the other end. And Kyle, you pointed out before in pregame that Landon Tucker looks a lot like Sunshine from uh, Remember the Titans. Ben and Jerry's needs him to play like it today. Hey, that's a Sunshine bucket right there on the other end. And a good defensive stop, and now they'll try to get it done again offensively. Got to be careful with Martin's crafty abilities right here as he passes it out to Landon. Trifecta on the way. That won't go. Offensive rebound, a foul, and we'll go to the line to shoot a pair. 
And Hope will go to the line. And Sal, what are you seeing in the first couple possessions? First couple possessions, you see that Showtime has really been sleeping. They're taking quick shots, as you've seen by C.J. Miles and his turnaround quick jumper. It's a bad shot, but at the same time, you get the shot you get when you run your offense. They're more of an athletic offense. They take their opportunities and throw anything up towards the rim. You'll see a lot of dunks tonight. And I'm sure the crowd on hand would love to see a lot of those. We already saw a couple of them in the last game, Ryan. Chase on hands with those pink shoes was putting on a show for us. But, uh, Sal, you got to give a team a couple minutes to wake up here. We're not even two minutes in the game yet, man. Oh, it's a championship game. You, you got to wake up two hours ago. You got to be ready. Got your game shoes on. Tie them up tight. Everybody, look at the shoes out here. There's got to be over $1,000 in sneakers out here. <laughs> <laughs> we got Jordans. We got Nike Hirachis. We got everything out here. I see all these 10 pair of Jordans, guys. And Sal, there's, there's only 10 guys on the court. Sal would go to the shoe department. That Wait. shot won't go tip on the way. Well, that won't go either. Well, and another missed shot. Well, Kyle, you got to go to the shoe department. It's the most important accessory for a basketball player. And I'm looking for some Converse's, honestly. I mean, that, that's what I'd be rocking out <laughs> Bring there. Bring back the Larry Bird Jordans oh, out with the Converse. My. Well, hey, if you can shoot like Larry Bird, it'll suit you well. An early 3 nothing lead. For Ben and Jerry's. As Showtime looks to put on a show offensively with a three of their own, that won't go. Ball will go out of bounds. And out comes Showtime is having a hard time putting it in the basket. Seems like what my colleague over here said, they haven't waken up yet. Miles in, Miles and Jeffrey are probably their best three-point threats right now, and everybody knows that. Shea is more of a driver, given his nickname to Shea Brisco, uh, Driver Briscoe. And Boom, he's more of a low post defender, not much of a scorer inside. And Kyle, Landon Tucker's putting the ball in everything right now, in the hoop, in the trash basket over there, in the hoop again, he's all over the place. A little nylon from Sunshine from downtown, and it's a quick start for him and a quick start for Ben and Jerry's. Definitely a great start for Landon as he replaces John Brown in the starting lineup. Definitely an adequate replacement, as obviously you can tell right here. Work it around deep. The trifecta is perfect the other way. A little nylon from downtown of his own, and I, it's 6-3. As I know from personal experience, when the Shea starts to heat up, he really gets hot. You might see him start taking that shot just as the heat check. Sal, I feel like you've been a victim of that shot a few times in the rec center. Everyone on this court has victimized me once or twice on this <laughs> Never been dunked on, though. I'm proud to say that. Now, for Ben and Jerry's right there, Dominique Sawyer trying to put in the alley-oop. Couldn't even get net right there, not to mention rim. So I'm thinking he might want to try a little something different next time. A nice jump shot on the other end, and showtime has made it a show as they put themselves right back into this game, 6-5. Ben and Jerry still with a lead early on, 14 minutes to go. Got to be careful here with Ben Williams. He's a great deep there and the left-hander at that. The hefty lefty, are you, are, are you resembling maybe a Tebow type for per performance here in the championship game? As I called before, there's the heat check from DeShea Briscoe. Didn't go down, but you, you, you can guarantee you'll see that shot one more time again. Nice play down low, lost the handle, reverse lay in, that won't go. Got his own offensive board. Kick it out for three more. Bang! The hefty lefty, like you said earlier, Kyle. Now, Ryan, we'll, we'll really be doing our job if we can get our message conveyed to them and see a little Tebow action before we start the second half. We might be able to pull that off, actually, Kyle, but, uh, you know, it might take a little coordination with the CRC, just like this whole event. Have to see what we can do there. But right now, a lot of three-pointers. Everybody on this team shoots like Keaton Cole. We might as well get him on the basketball team, the real one. Well, they're trying to put on a three-point shootout early on. And a couple substitutions coming on. And, Sal, what can you tell us about them for Ben and Jerry's? We got Denny Faracho coming in. Denny is a feisty defender. If, you, if he's guarding you guys, you're going to leave there with a bunch of bruises and scratches. And he's a sneaky defender at that. Won't get too many fouls called on him. But at the same time, he's an adequate offensive rebounder. You got Dalton coming in, another deep threat coming off the bench at number 20. Now, Sal's over there talking about bruises and scratches, Kyle. That sounds more like a dirty defender than a uh, sneaky one. Oh, no, sir. We all know this is a man's game, and you got to get physical sometimes. It's a physical game down, especially in the low block. Fast break. Opportunity for showtime. Nice pass. Looking for the end one. Won't get it. Won't even get two. As the shot won't go off the window. And Ben and Jerry's with the rebound. 
poked cut. away pickpocket. They're on the run again. Skip pass. This time he'll lay it in. No harm. A little boom off the window. Great steal there by Jeffrey off the not too well of a ball handler, Denny Faracho there. Shot from long range, that won't go. Great screen by Denny there, giving Dalton a great open look. And that's what Denny does. He does the little dirty things that too many teams don't, don't seem to quite understand. Miles looks up at the rim for a second time after coming up way short on that one. And we've talked about it. From playing in Reed Gym in the rec center, there's a wall pretty close behind the basket here. It's a lot of depth with a lot of bleachers right behind the basket and it's throwing shooters off here tonight. Yeah, it's definitely throwing off their depth of vision, especially on that long jump shot. This, is a, this seems to be a little bigger court than we have there at the rec center, but at the same time, you still gotta show up and play. Nice spin move. Try to do a little Haruna Matumbo impersonation with that step back jump shot. Not quite a Haruna Matumbo result, but still a good move on the inside. Well, you know, Kyle, we can't all be intercollegiate level. <laughs> that, that's part of what intramurals is for, right, is to be able to go out there, ball a little bit. We've seen some great performances today in all the games, and maybe he takes that shot a again a little bit later, and maybe he pops it. Ball goes out of bounds. It'll stay with Ben and Jerry's, and early on, Sal, Showtime comes in with a lot of athletic prowess, but Ben and Jerry's has been right there and they're doing it with shooting the basketball at a high percentage, especially from deep. Like I said in the pregame, Ben and Jerry's is more of a tactical team. They know what shots they want. They're not going to force any errant, reckless shots. They're going to take those specific shots, and they're going to box out and play defense. Miles' shot is short, but a hustle play. That time will earn another trip as Felton knocked it off Ben and Jerry's and will get another look for showtime offensively. Jeffrey Felton making a play like Raymond Felton almost right down there. Shot from long range. Back iron won't go. Another offensive board. Another opportunity. Great Lost it on the back. Martin. Lost it on the back door cut. And a good takeaway by Martin as Sal you alluded to. And a foul on the floor. We'll go to the line for two shots. You got to be careful with Martin as well. Even though he's right-handed, he's very ambidextrous and can go any way he wants. Left, right, up, back, down. Whichever way you point, he'll get there. Now, Sal, can he use his feet to dribble as well? He might can. I honestly <laughs> don't know. Hey, maybe he'll shoot with him, and we can call him Bigfoot. That's a, that's a stretch. <laughs> <laughs> now, I'm more concerned with the fact that Kyle wants to call another man Bigfoot to begin with right now. Well. <laughs> Kyle, you're skeptical right now, buddy. Hey. <laughs> this job wouldn't be any fun without a little skepticism. And... Approaching nine minutes to go, we'll send it down to our sideline reporter, Jake, on the sideline. All right, thanks, Kyle. I'm here in the student section of the Ramsey Center with one of the students from Car Western Carolina this University. What's your name? Uh, Tyler Milner. Oh, all right, Tyler. Nice to meet you. And what do you think of the game so far tonight? Well, I'm telling you, uh, for Ben and Jerry's, Martin Davis is playing a big role tonight. He's assisting, facilitating, and hitting big shots. For the other team, <clears throat> Deshae and Boom Boom really are quite the combination. Deshae on the outside, Boom Boom on the end. It's looking like quite a game so far. Definitely, definitely. So do you really root for either team, or is it just back and forth? Well, it's really back and forth. Uh, Martin Davis, again, is uh, one of my favorites. Key player, number four, blue team. Make sure to keep your eyes on him tonight. Oh, we definitely will. Uh, one more question before I let you go. Uh, do you know how they came up with the name Ben & Jerry's by chance? Well, I believe it's uh, started with an ice cream company. Uh, they all enjoy it. Uh, but other than that, I'm not really too sure. <laughs> all right, Tyler. Appreciate the time. Back to you guys, Kyle. Thank you well, thanks a lot. And... As he alluded to up there in the student section, Martin Davis, a big part of this Ben and Jerry squad, Sal. Definitely a big part. I think the name alluded with the key players, Ben Williams and Jerry Hoop, as they probably initiated this team. As you see, a dunk attempt here by Jeffrey, but none of that here coming from Kerwin Williams. As he greatly, def uh, masterfully defends that shot. Well, a smart foul, too. Instead of giving him a right-handed throwdown, he's going to have to work for it and earn it at the free throw line. Hey, Curran doesn't want to hear that stuff in the rec center for the rest of the year that he got dunked on by Jeffrey. So great defensive <laughs> effort right there on his part. Mad props, bro. Especially in the Ramsey Center on a big stage where it's televised. He, he'd have to live that one down for a long time. Oh, yeah. This is playing on 62 for about a six-month rotation. So. <laughs> I'm telling you what, though, Kyle. 
Ramsey centers rims, not used to this kind of abuse. I mean, Jay Sean, hands trying to bring him down earlier. Now you got Felton trying to put down the big one-hander. I mean, they're not allowed to do that in the NCAA. You get a tech for it here tonight, though. You know, on the big stage, on the big, uh, in front of the cameras, they're letting him play. Well, I mean, we have seen some big throwdowns here from the men's team. Brandon Box has gotten up there. Tawaski King. I remember in that Chattanooga game, we thought the whole goal was going to come down when he went up there with a big dunk. And, Ryan, you were lucky enough to be asleep during it. But you quickly got awoken up by Hunter's hooligans down there on the far side on the student section. It was a rough day. You know, you got to pull all-nighters in college every now and then. And uh, I'll, I'll take that, Kyle. That's a little revenge for the Dickie V and all the other stuff I put you today. You've been a good sport. But uh, I'm keeping an eye right now on Denny Ferraccio, who's at the line. He's got a shirt with a dollar sign on it. And you got to back up that kind of fashion statement. So let's see if he can put up some points. And it's all about the dollar bills, y'all. <laughs> As Denny drains both from, can you say money, guys? Well, Sal, you got to afford them shoes that you were talking about well, earlier. Of course, just look at the look at the kick game out here today, guys. Is, if it's not Nike or Jordan, you ain't on the court right now. <laughs> we got Dazzle up here stepping up, number six, kicking it to the Shea Briscoe with the hard drive. With his own offensive rebound, can he put it back up? Yes, he can in traffic, 4-2. Nicely done off the window, and Sal, I'm trying to take my job over here. Not taking your job, just giving one of my homeboys props. <laughs> Fair enough, 12-12, a well-contested basketball game both ways. Look for a kick out, nice kick to the post. And kick out for three, nothing but air. And he'll get the rebound. Will Cedric Little. Seems like Curran has his own little cheering section up there as they make fun of him, but it looks like a bunch of the friends, so not, not much to worry about. Well, Sal Denny made a statement on the other end. He didn't like hearing that laughter because he just blocked that one right out of the grill. Well, Ryan, let me ask you, do you like being laughed at? Hey, the way I see it, not in my house, and that's what he said with that block. Sal, he, Sal, he gets laughed at too much to not like it. We have to pick on him every now and again. Have you seen him during one of our basketball games here? He's over there with cheerleaders, dance team, Paul. Paul's I, I give Ryan a heck of a time. Ryan has gotten interviews with some of the hottest ladies here on campus tonight. He got a nice uh, Caitlin Pachotto interview. He's got the coaches. <laughs> hey, big props to Ryan tonight. Hey, who tried to set him up? Hey, we heckle him a lot for all his uh, post interviews, but he did pretty good today. Pivot ain't easy, guys. That's all I got to say. <laughs> Oh, me, everyone having a good time here in the Ramsey Center. Intramural championship night, A-League game, 12-12, 5-07, first half. On the court for Ben and Jazz, we got Landon, who came out with that uh, hot stars. He got a quick five points back out on the court. And Jerry and Ben, probably the co-founders of the team on the court as well. A co-founder, I like it. Dazzle here, number six for the Showtime team here, defended by uh, Kerwin. Nice take is Dazzle. Fields it and he'll pull it back. Isolation, kick out. Pass out Cedric, Cedric Little for three off the back iron, no good. They'll try it again. That trifecta will go. Big Al for three. Big Al rattles it home from downtown. And a big shot, it puts them up 15-12, their first lead of the night. Let's see how Al can defend one of the quicker players for Ben and Jerry's and Landon Tucker. Nice drive with the right hand, that won't go. Gets his own miss. Sunshine doesn't know where to go to the ball there, uh, Kyle. Well, a little hesitation there, but team maintains possession. Does Ben and Jerry's looking to work it? And especially playing in a starting lineup, Sal, I, I know that you played a little bit of ball back in your day. When you're used to playing with a set group of guys coming off the bench and now all of a sudden you're thrown with the starters, it can be a little overwhelming and takes a little bit of getting used to. Definitely. you got to know your role whenever you're on the court. If you're in the starting five, you usually know whether you're the, the guy who set screen, the guy who wouldn't take the big shot, the guy to get the rebounds. When you're in there in the mix with the starters, you got to learn how to mesh with the role. It's kind of like the, tr uh, the trouble the Knicks are having now with the Jeremy Lin situation and all this influx of new players coming in. Oh, it's Lin Sanity. Lin Sanity makes an appearance on yet another broadcast, Ryan. I'm not even going to grace that, Kyle. What I'm going to point out is you're talking about Sal's basketball career, and what you're leaving out is that he has quite a history of trying to 
try out for the Lady Cats, no, and no. he hasn't managed to do it yet. I haven't made the team. You know, those girls are pretty good, and I give them credit <laughs> every now and again. But, hey, I'm a former B-League champion last year. I didn't get my shirt, which I'm still griping over. But, hey, hey last year, champion, I'll take it. Playoffs? Where, <laughs> where were you in the playoffs this year? We got beat in the playoffs this year, by, but, but it was by a pretty good team, and I give them all the credit in the world. Those guys deserve to win, and they lost to actually Jay's team, the Pride Rock, who came out here and won the championship tonight. Sunshine misses the three on the other end. Showtime. Big Al. Big Al takes a big fall, but he draws contact and he'll go to the line for a deuce. Big Al has a lot of lower body contact and strength, which helps to draw his, uh, the contact for his and one shots opportunities. And Sal, Big Al looks like he's got the body of Michael Turner. I mean, legs like tree trunks, kind of low center of gravity, and a little bit of toughness down there, too. Hey, would you want to get ran over by Michael Turner? I would not want to get ran over. As a Falcons fan, I can guarantee you I've seen enough guys get ran over by Michael Turner. I, I'm dodging out of the way if that happens. Well, if Big Al's driving on me, I'm getting out of his way. <laughs> I'll go for the block attempt. That's why you were in men's B, Sal. <laughs> I, think I, I know I'm getting out of the way. Yeah, I might try to draw a charge every now and then. Just, just hold my own down there on the low block. We got well, Dalton here guarded by a feisty defender and Cedric Little. A blow by. Gets by him, but misses the layup. Now, now, Kyle, you're talking about taking a charge, and I mean, you got a set example as a coach, but um, I do. You got to be a little careful right now too, because Sal, I mean, he was showing some swag in the women's game, play-by-play -play commentary, coming up with nicknames left and right, and that's the second time he's tried to steal your job over here. Let's remember this too. Sal is in the rec center a lot, so he already knows all their nicknames. Yeah. Let, let's first make that statement clear. You got Ben over here with the and one. It's almost sliding off the court. And, guys, you referred to, yes, I've played with all these guys. I've obviously made it clear a lot of these guys have embarrassed me before. But at the same time, I create nicknames. I'm the nickname generator. Oh, no. It's, but, see, one nickname that you were not a part of was T. Swag. And Trey Sumler, he even approved that nickname over there for you, Ryan. The entire basketball team is, has approved that nickname. I mean, <laughs> over the year, I've gotten to know everybody, and they love it. I haven't asked Coach Hunter. I should have had you do that but uh, the oh other my. night. But for some reason, I'm thinking that Coach Hunter would be a little more skeptical. But, hey, we like it. He's Works too humble. He's too humble. Back into the front court. Go Ben and Jerry's down five now. Showtime on the break. Showtime is here showing the athleticism as they're getting in the passing lane, and they've had consecutive steals here now as Jeffrey takes his wide open three. Bang! He hits all Jeffrey three of those. Bell. A little nylon from the corner. A little nylon, I see. <laughs> Dalton passing it off to one of the better players on the Ben and Jerry's team, Ben, co-founder. Hey, there's some things that just carry over. From the intercollegiate level, 15 seconds to go. Quick swill they hold for the last shot. Down to nine, they'll go try to post up Boom Boom. A tough shot, got it to go. Dominique Sawyer, number three, a great inside player, but as well. Miles, a heave at the buzzer, won't go. Off the front iron, no good. That'll bring us to the halftime. 23-17, your keys early on south. For the home team at Showtime, their athleticism has obviously been a problem for uh, Ben and Jerry's as one of their primary ball handlers, and John Brown is out. Ben and Jerry's, they know what shots they want to take, but they, they seem to be falling off of the, uh, the plan a little bit as they started to force shots there at the end. And as you saw, saw right there on that replay, Jeffrey Felton doing a good job from the perimeter, as we saw in that last possession from the corner. Felton's everywhere. He shoots from the outside. He tried to put down a dunk earlier. Plays pretty solid defense. And I'll tell you what, Ben and Jerry's wearing blue for a reason. They're like Duke. If they can't hit the three-pointer, they can't win. We've seen it so far. They've got to find a way to have some sort of post game in the second half. Inside out, we'll say inside the Ramsey Center while you enjoy the halftime festivities here, courtesy of TV62 on the intramural championship night here at the Ramsey Center. Men's A-League championship at the half. Showtime with a 23-17 lead over Ben and Jerry's. And we're ready for the second half in Sal. What does Ben and Jerry's have to do more of to get that lead back? To be honest with you, they got to be more careful with their passing. 
You got to make sure that nobody's in the passing lane. And if you're feeding the post, make sure the post player is sealing his guy. Other than that, that's the best way Ben Jackson can get back in this game. Cut down the turnovers. And for Showtime, what do they do to keep or extend this lead here in the second half? Be aggressive. Be, be aggressive. Oh, no. As the cheerleaders Sal back in high school. Said, if those guys maintain the level of play and aggressiveness that they have, There's no, I have no doubt in my mind they'll win this game. See, Sal is a former mascot. I know that line all too well. So, Ryan, I, I don't know if you heard it or not, but we have Sal the cheerleader over here now. Uh... <laughs> You know, our cheerleading uh, team has two guys. I mean, well, you know, I interviewed uh, Johnny, one of the male cheerleaders for Western the other uh, game, and he, you know, he wants to get more guys on there, you know? Well, there you go. The only problem, Sal may or may not graduate <laughs> this spring. Pretty sure I'm getting out of here. Pretty <laughs> sure I'm getting out of here. Follow the cap and gown and everything. Are, I'm out. Are, are you taking the express out, or are we, uh, we going to make it a slow ride out of they're here? They're remodeling the Concord, and I'm taking it out of here. <laughs> Are they rolling out the red carpet, too? Well, you know it is, because uh, it's Sal, and that's a big deal around here. <laughs> well, you so, know, uh, while we talk about glo uh, Sal's glorious departure, um, not to get too sappy or anything, but Sal, our senior guy, mainly cameraman, and he's done a great job of it. And he today has. we've given him a chance to do something a little different, and he's done a pretty good job of that today uh, as well. I'm a multifaceted communications I'm multi major. I like it. And I'll tell you, Kyle, uh, He's the most humble guy you will ever meet as well, right. as, you can, as you can definitely tell. Right. Never in my life have I been humble. Never. <laughs> Got Jeffrey here, a little post-game mid-range, see if he kick it to Miles. Miles with the dribble back out. I got my money, Miles shoots it. Yep. He well, he's, he's taking the shot. He doesn't care. Miles asks for the ball, posts up. A nice little floater <laughs> in and around and won't go. I think I was right on that bet. No one ever betted against you. Miles commits a foul. And we'll go to the line to shoot two. A good, solid drive by Dalton Brandon that time for Ben and Jerry's. Definitely a good drive. He knew the contact was coming. He tried to get it up for the and one. Didn't make it, but got two free throws for the for the trouble. Well, when Miles is coming, you get rid of the ball and draw the contact you can and get out of the way. And Cal, not to bring up the shoes again, but I think that Brandon's name should be Dazzle. I mean, look at those things. I think they have sparkles on them. Oh, no. my goodness. Nothing nothing as cute as uh, Jeffrey's shoes with the lime green uh, showcase. He was blinding people out on the court in that B-League SAE championship game. Hey. It's hey, part. Let's not remember. Remember the Catamounts had the pink zone game. Haruna Matumbo was rocking about the shin-high pink socks as well. Yeah, and I wanted to get an interview with Haruna today to talk about that. Unfortunately, wasn't able to. But I think the difference is, and why we're noticing it today, Kyle, is that, you know, the team, they're going to kind of unify it, kind of make it similar. And today, you know, you've got part basketball game, part fashion show. This is true, especially, Sal, you know, you know a lot of the guys in the rec center. When the lights come on, so, so does the fashion world as well as far as shoes and oh, yeah. whatever else you got in the wardrobe. Definitely. You'll see guys talking more about their shoe game than their actual playing. <laughs> A lot of guys think they have skills because they have the new Jordans, but at the same time, they do have skills. And if you can afford the shoes, why not? Okay, so I'm glad, I'm glad that you kept on going with that because I was going to ask you, does that mean they have no skills at all and that's why they talk about the shoes? Or Oh, no, there's plenty of guys who waste $300 on a pair of shoes. But, hey, if you got game like that, you do your thing, homeboy. Hey, and, I mean, for a guy like me, if you're not going to play as well, you might as well look good doing it. <laughs> Kyle, if you can drop 300 bucks on shoes, then you feel free to brag about it as much yeah. as you want that to. That ain't going to happen, man. I just go out there. I had a pair of basketball shoes, actually, I, from my JV basketball days in high school. And I haven't gotten new ones since, so sneakers work for me. The other ones don't have tread anymore, so. The athleticism for Showtime just keeps showing off. As you, as you see, Jeffrey, number three for the red Showtime team, keeps finishing above the rim. Hasn't dunked it yet, but keep looking, and I'm pretty sure he'll dunk it on somebody's head here coming up soon. So, so Sal has posted a dunk alert. So, so, so you're saying the iron should be where, again, of another invasion? Definitely be where, iron. They're coming for you. Uh-oh. <laughs> I uh, I want to see Baby Shaq Jr. put one in uh, Quavelis Murray. Boom, I mean, we've boom, already had Baby Shaq. Oh, with, nice uh, spin with a left hand. A little 
a kiss off the window. Definitely a little contact there by Nick Stan. Maybe he's looking for that extra free throw that comes with that shot. Kick it out, swing it around. They'll try for three. Get all three of them to go. Brandon lights it up from outside. A big shot. And a little Catamount three-point T mockery by TJ Eves. Not really, Kyle. I mean, they're actually throwing T-shirts right now. But uh, well, I mean, on the PA side, it was a mockery. <laughs> I think well, TJ's had more fun today than almost anybody. You know, <laughs> I, I'd have to agree with you on that count. He's done starting a lot. Hey, maybe, maybe he's trying to find a new career for when he graduates and leaves the student body president office later this spring. That is not a bad idea, Kyle. I mean, if you can make a little money in here, that's one of the best seats in the house. Very true is a foul is called. And two shots will be coming for showtime. This is Nick Stamp. And again, Sal, that athleticism, it, it's evident in almost every offensive possession as they're driving to the basket. Definitely. Definitely the athleticism here for the showtime team, a key factor in their lead right now. But at the same time, you see Ben and Jerry's not backing down, running their offense, finding open threes, and knocking them down at the process. He's good on both of those. And we, we have a malfunction on the scoreboard area. The scoreboard put him on the wrong side of the scoreboard, so we'll get that fixed. The proper score is 29-24. So hey, right on cue. They, they were listening to me, Sal. See what happens when you listen to me? Hey, all you got to do is pay attention every now and again. <laughs> Don't let that one go to your head, Kyle, but we've got a pretty good game right now as uh, Showtime maybe a little better athletically, but not pulling away on the scoreboard. A nice tip in. Felton again. Back-to-back -back offensive rebounds there by Showtime, just showing their jumping ability that they have that's quite, quite better than the Ben & Jerry squad. Well, like you said, Sal, Ben & Jerry's it is in this game because of their tactics. And... Their ability to get the shots that they want to get, and they're being really efficient on the offensive end. Again, at the free throw line as Davis looks for two. Now, don't get me wrong here. I, I feel like we're making it sound Ben and Jerry's doesn't have any athletes on their squad as well. They're, they're quite crafty and very athletic. Here with a, th a substitution with Kerwin Lanier and Dominique Sawyer, who are two very athletic players who I've played with uh, against myself. And uh, crafty Martin at the line knocking down these free throws. So, well, so we, you say you've played against them. How would you fare against them? I've, I've won my fair share of uh, rec league pickup games, won my fair share of one-on-one -on -one games. I'm not going to brag a little bit. I think I'm above 500, though. And I want to remind you, a lot of these guys do hang out in that rec center, and a lot of basketball goes on down there. Go down there and check them out. Every now and again, boom, boom, going to work. A little and one with a kiss off the last. And a little back pedal to boot. He's doing it in style down there, Ryan Keyes. Yes, he is, and... We've seen a little bit of everything tonight, Kyle. I mean, and when you have four games, a lot of different athletes out there, you get to see a little bit of everything. So, so far, very good game. And now we've got Murray at the line trying to complete the old-fashioned three-pointer. Now, don't be surprised by Boom Boom's athleticism. He's the starting center for our Western Carolina Catamounts football team. The guy, the guy has athleticism, and he's disciplined as well. Jump hook, that won't go. Loose ball. Comes the showtime. They look to extend on the lead as they now lead by seven. Felton again with the right hand, and how pretty was that move? Jeffrey almost makes this game look easy because his long length and great athleticism. He knows when to pick his spots and when to take the shot that he wants. Almost, Sal, I'd argue he did make it look easy on that last possession. Lead up to nine. Ben and Jerry's gets a foul, and Ryan, th these are big free throws for Ben and Jerry's. They gotta get on the scoreboard and keep in touch with this lead. Yeah, Martin Davis getting to the line quite a bit for Ben and Jerry. He's kind of carrying the team right now, keeping them in this game. But you got to do a little more than that to claw back into it. You got to play some defense as well. First shot won't go. And Sal, the importance of free throws, we talk about it at the collegiate level between, you know, when the Catamounts are playing here in the Ramsey Center. But 
it trickles even down to intramurals. Free throws are huge in the game of basketball, no matter how you look at it. They call them free throws for a reason. You get to the line, possibly you can make even and one plays, four point plays even if you knock down your free throws. The key to free throws is the higher percentage team usually wins. Every now and again, you'll see a team sneak out a win with a few free throws. But right here is key. As you see, Martin only make one free throw. It's key to the game. Boom Boom has it taken away. Davis almost walked with it. Kick back for three, that won't go. That, that's a problem there for Ben right there. He should have just shot the ball with, in rhythm instead of making sure he's behind the three-point line. A three isn't going to win you the game right now. Just shoot the shot in rhythm, and hopefully it'll go down. Offensive rebound, though, and to the free throw line is Dominique Sawyer, who will look for a pair. Can't get the first to go. And Sal, I don't know if I agree with that. Uh, I kind of like Ben Williams looking down, trying to see if he could get the three out of it because he was trying to get the shot there right off receiving the pass, and that's kind of like just a spot-up shot. If you rush your shot too much, you're not going to make it either. So taking a little time trying to make the shot, I don't think that was a bad play. I'm not, I'm not saying it was a bad play, but he took too much time at the same in the, in the same progress at that. And Jake has another interview for us on the sideline. Jake, take it away. All right, thanks, guys. I'm here with Kenny Hall, one of the basketball players on the basketball team. And, uh, hey, Kenny, so you got two big games coming up this week, Samford on Thursday and then App on Saturday to finish out the SoCon schedule. Are you, uh, are you looking forward to it? Oh, yeah, most definitely. We're looking forward to go ahead and finish out the season strong so we can get in the SoCon tournament and hopefully just win it all this year. All right, definitely. I know you've been working hard at practice with you and your teammates. Y'all look like y'all have a lot, of, a lot of fun out there. Uh, what do you think is the biggest, I guess you could say, key to the game, especially on Thursday, considering it's Sanford at home? Uh, it's, our, it's our defense and limiting our three-point shots. We just got to really turn it up on defense, and we'll be able to score and transition in and our offense. All right, definitely. And uh, just for a little fun note, what do you think of the uh, game here tonight? Uh, it it looked real fun out here. I wish I could, I could play, but can't play on the, on the sports scholarship. I got a couple of friends out here playing right now, and I just watched them play. <laughs> All right, Kenny, you all have a good time. Back to you, Ryan, Kyle. All right. Thanks a lot. And Kenny Hall, you know it's a competitor when he's watching the game of basketball and is dying to be out there on the court doing something he doesn't do very often as a spectator here tonight. Yeah, but Kenny actually got out on the court there. I mean, he participated in the halftime show, little uh, dizzy bat, and then put home the layup. So even when Kenny's taking a break from basketball and watching the game, he's still out there trying to play. And again, Ben and Jerry's at the free throw line as they trail by 10 with just under six and a half to go. And they'll need more efforts like that to cut into this lead. We've got substitutions here as Jerry and Denny Ferracho step into the game. And Davis finally gets the set for a second free throw. Rattles it in. The lead is eight. As the message from the Ben and Jerry's bench is know who you got and play a little defense. Nice drive to the rack. That won't go. Felton again looks to set up the offense. Kyle, Ben and Jerry, right? Ben and Jerry's right now looking to capitalize by having both guys out there. Number two, Ben Williams, and number six, Jerry Hoop. So Ben and Jerry are both out there for Ben and Jerry's. They're trying to mix things up, see if they can get a little luck going here. Look for a little naming inspiration there maybe as well. And Sal, I really like what Showtime's doing. They're taking their time. They're taking their time. Yeah, they got the turnover there, but taking their time, making Ben and Jerry's play their type of game. Yeah, definitely. But it was only a 10-point lead. Everybody knows there's only about a few possessions, three or four possessions max. You still have to be aggressive here and make sure you get your buckets. Or you get simple turnovers like this uh, by Cedric Little, who just had this uh, turnover. And if Ben and Jerry's gets a score here, they'll right back into the game. An 11-point deficit, or a 9-point deficit, rather as they go to the free throw line, under four and a half to go. Yeah, Kyle, they got Big Al for that call. He didn't like that one too much. Turned around and said, what? Free throw won't go. 
as it gets set for number two. And seems to be killing the, the Ben and Jerry's team right here as they're struggling from the free throw strike. Sal, you took the words out of my mouth. I was going to say, hey, the free throws have kind of hurt them. Look at Boom Boom run the floor. He's hacked on the way up. He'll shoot a pair. But how about the hustle getting down to the other end of the floor? Definitely a great hustle on Martin to get back. There seemed to be miscommunication by the Ben and Jerry squad, as in who had who. So Matt had, Martin had to come down and hack, hack a shack technique right there on Boom Boom and see if he earned these points from the free throw strike. Well, after the timeout, we'll see if he shoots a little better than Shaq from the free throw line. And Ryan, it certainly doesn't take a whole lot. It's been a bit of a struggle for Ben and Jerry's, especially here in the second half. They've done enough to stay in the game, but they have not done a lot more as they take a timeout now. Get to watch the refs have a little fun out there, try to make a few shots. Well, I I'm sure Philip Jackson is somewhere evaluating his peers, especially the shooting ability. and. Players take the floor, and we'll get set for more basketball. 3.49 left, an eight-point showtime lead over Ben and Jerry's with Boom Boom at the line. Boom Boom at the line, ready to shoot. First free throw is good. And a pretty good touch for a big man, Sal, from the charity stripe. Same time, this guy has great touch. He's been he's been playing uh, both sports in high school since his high school days, and he's not a stranger to the hardwood floor. And I imagine with the size that he has, he's not a stranger to the free throw stripe either, and that could explain that nice touch, Kyle. True, and, and he's not the only big man. We see a lot of big men throughout not only college, but even at the high school level. When you pose a problem size-wise, you'll earn your fair trips to the free throw line. And Kyle, we've seen something in the NBA a lot nowadays, the evolution of the big man. Look mm -hmm. at Dirk Nowitzki. Not only can he play down low, but he can shoot from the outside. He's a excellent free throw shooter and we started to see it a lot more in the college game a lot more athleticism with your big guys they just they can do it all in the college game it transitions as having uh, small forwards playing the big guy position you see that with a uh, michael beasley kevin durant those guys they came in as uh power forwards in college but when they got to the league they played small forward shooting guard roles and you don't really see the dominating big man like the Shaquille O'Neal's or anyone mm -hmm. like that anymore. You don't see that type of style of game because of the way that rules have changed and such like that, but also just the need for a big man to be more than just a big man. They're almost like hybrid positions at this point. A very good point, Ben and Jerry's in trying to get much needed points as the clock winds under two minutes. Here's a turnover. Nice behind the back dribble, lost it on the handle, loose ball. And almost looks like a scrap for the fumble out there. And they'll see who they'll get the ball to. It'll stay with Showtime with 144 to go in a seven point lead. You see Ben and Jerry's here hustling on every possession, trying to get back in this game and hopefully win. And Kyle, this is looking more and more like a football game. So Boom Boom should be pretty comfortable out there. He's right in his element if it turns into one of those. How about the ball handling, though, that time? Well done as a jump ball is called. Possession arrow will be with Ben and Jerry's. Hustle earning them a possession, Sal. Substitutions in as last for Miles on the sideline, Cedric Little Steps into the lineup. Bring a little defense here with Cedric Little and taking Big Al out. Looking to drive on Boom. Easier said than done. Drive inside. Good defense by Boom on the interior. Out of bounds. It'll stay here with Ben and Jerry's, who are still down seven, a minute 13. What do they have to do to get the offense going and play a little defense to try to get back in the ball game? Ben so. and Jerry's here have to notice their mismatch and use the pick and roll game for the open three point shots. Right now they're throwing up Aaron shots with guys right in their face and it's not gonna work, especially with almost under a minute on the clock. 
Felton gets it across half court. Seven point game. And Ryan, when do you break out the foul technique is you need to stop this clock. I think now, Kyle, because they can run as much clock as they want to, and they seem fine with that, keeping it away from the basket. But it's going to be tough because Showtime playing pretty good defense as well. We saw Devin Mitchell in that last play get a tip on Ben Williams' shot, deflected just wide of the net. Felton lays it in. It's a turnover. Felton has the basketball. Timeout. Showtime, and with a nine-point lead and 32.8 seconds to go, barring a collapse, you would think it'll be a Showtime championship here in the A-League final. Definitely. This game seems to be over. Showtime, Showtime's defense is stifling uh, Ben and Jerry's offense right now. They're falling out of character, taking Aaron's shots, and they're definitely not doing what they came in doing. This game is over, guys. So, Ryan, Sal, Sal sticking a fork in it, calling it done. What's your take? It's going to be tough. Down by nine. I mean, in a regular game with the shot clock going, maybe you got a shot, even though, honestly, you the got 32 seconds left, off. the shot clock's off. So, I mean, at that point, you got to foul or you got to try to cause a quick turnover. And I think Sal's right because Ben and Jerry's just struggling so much shooting the ball right now. Foul is called. And, and we'll see who has to take the free throws for Showtime. And I'll tell you what, Kyle, uh, the crowd is thinking that this game's over, too. we got a lot of people leaving right now. Coach Q, not one of them. He's seen stranger things over there on the near side. Who, who knows, knowing him, he might try to get a little coaching in for this Ben and Jerry squad. Well, Kyle, we should try to get Coach Q over here and uh, get a post-game interview from him. Hey, Ryan, that's all you, sir. This is your event. Run it, big fella. Speaking of big fellas, a big free throw from Boom as he knocks down both free throws and Sal. That is huge when you have a guy that is that big of a presence on the low block that can do that. Definitely. With them being up by more than 10 here, the clock is not going to stop. Trifecta, now it will. 42-34. And Boom will go to the line again with a... Eight point lead, 14 seconds to go. And some free throws to pad the stat book and that'll be about it. No, that's all you do. <laughs> First free throw is good. Boom Boom with a second free throw. Metal rattle home. Lead is now 10, 14.3 to go. It's over now, Kyle. I can say <laughs> that. And I think the play on the court would exemplify that as well. Under 10 to go. A one-handed dunk. Tried to get a show for us before we left. Won't get it to go. The buzzer sounds. And in a moment, Ryan will be with Coach Cupid Sal. What gave Showtime the championship? Definitely their stifling defense made it one of the harder uh, off, uh, defenses that Ben and Jerry's has seen. But we'll kick it here to Ryan in his interview. And Ryan, we'll send it over to you now who's with Coach Q. Ryan, take it away. All right, here with Coach Q, Coach McCollum from the men's basketball team. And Coach, you're close to turning time here. We saw some intramural basketball today, but we still have intercollegiate basketball left to go. How do you feel about your Catamounts? Oh, man, you better believe um, we do have a lot of basketball. First of all, let me say, man, great job on our intramural program here at Western Carolina. Great program. Uh, you're talking about great championship games in all division, all genders. And, I mean, co-ed, the whole nine, man. It was good stuff. Uh, but, yeah, man, it's tournament time. This is the time of year, baby, that you want to be in. You know, if you're playing, coaching, or just being a fan of it, baby. You're talking about uh, March Madness. First, you got to get that Suncom Madness, baby. And it's going to be right over here to Asheville. So, yeah, we're excited. Got two more home games left. Uh, we finish out strong, man. We can pretty much put ourselves in a good position, man, where we can be successful here come tournament time. Now, Coach, you were out here supporting the students today. What do you have to say to them to get them to come back in here and support you, particularly against the app? Oh, man, most definitely, man. I want to let the students out there on campus and those that live off campus know, man, that, hey, baby, this, we are your team, period, point blank. 
You understand me? If you can't have pride for what you wear, to where you go and where you spend time and where you go to school at, hey, what you got to have pride for? That same enthusiasm and energy that you brought when you was in high school or your favorite so-called collegiate team prior to you getting here to Western Carolina. You bring that passion because you better believe that's what's going to be needed if we are able to do what we want to do. And that's what finished these next two games out against Sanford on Thursday and then Appalachia, as you so speak, on Saturday. Baby, you know that. Appalachian, I should have to say no more. So Catamount Nation, come on out here, baby, support us, because you better believe we truly need you in this thing here, period of point blank. Now, we were talking to Trey Sumler earlier. We've nicknamed him T-Swag as we've been covering you guys all year. And you mentioned the pride in the team, and that fuels your defense, your offense, everything else. Defense has been huge for you guys all year. How do you keep it going into this tournament? Oh, man, you're speaking on Trey, Trey Sumler, man. You better believe the young man who's been busting his behind, um, not only on the basketball court, but all but here lately on that court to where, you know, it's put us in a good position. Um, uh, but then for us as a team and whole, um, I think with our defense, because, you know, defense wins championship, period, period. And Coach Hunter, and with his um, development of our program and the things that he's been teaching us since day one, you got to have it. Name of the game, put it in the hole, but you got to guard somebody from doing the same thing to you. And that's what we got. We, that's what we get back into. Our guys are buying into our defensive principles, listening to scouting reports, really observing what they need to observe, and applying it out there when they get out there on that court. Just as we saw here in these championships, man. Everybody was saying, okay, this, that, live score. But you got to play some D, baby. This championship time. Yeah. You're fired up for this interview. You're fired up on the sidelines 24-7, <laughs> and that energy is huge for defense. So keep them fired up for us, Coach. It's nice seeing you. Good luck for the rest of the season, and we appreciate it. Kyle, back to you. Thanks a lot, Ryan, and Coach Q, entertaining as always. Certainly wish them the best of luck, and folks will remind you about that Appalachian State game Saturday. To all the students out there, get out here. What a game it was. It was a classic. We played it on 62 time and time again. And as Coach Q said, if that game can't fire you up, I don't know what will. Definitely, definitely, it's definitely one of those games where you come out, you show your true catamount pride, and you go out there and you support your team. Because you know what, we got the Power Purple Challenge going on, and we, we got to get this W because we lost at their house. We do. It's a it's a big time game, and you know as we mentioned, T Swag, they'll be looking to stripe a little nylon there on Saturday here in the Ramsey Center, and. What an atmosphere it was a year ago. I still remember calling that game. We, we weren't fortunate enough to be at the press table, but to call it in general was unbelievable. Gary Ayers, if you look at the video of it, it's on YouTube. He's sitting there. He has both hands in the air. He knew it was good the whole way. Definitely. And what a thriller it was. And as evenly matched as every team in this conference is, we could see another one here Saturday afternoon. And it's a great point, and uh, if you can fire up Gary Ayers, you know, he's got to broadcast <laughs> to about four or five different radio yep. stations. He's got to be a little careful with that. He can't get away with quite as much as we can, so if you get him on his feet, it's definitely saying something. It should be a good night there Thursday. Congratulations to all the championship teams. Showtime getting the win for Men's A-League, and... We will send it off for intramural championship coverage. Be sure to tune in Thursday night. Men's take basketball takes on Sanford. For all our TV62 crew, I'm Kyle Rush. Thanks again for joining us for intramural champ night. Have a good night, everybody.